Hello and welcome to today's tutorial. This piece was kind of an interesting one because I was upcycling a piece that did not turn out well in a mold that was left over from a schoolmate of mine in uh, LA. So uh, let's go through the pieces. I started with a bra that I attached wire and latex to and I pre-painted my pieces um, before applying them to my face. Again, this was a mistake mold, so the piece was actually quite thick around the edges, which means I had to really use some some tips and tricks and and fudge some things to make it blend out. So I put on my layer of prosade first, and I'm pressing the prosthetic into my skin. You can already see where the edges are way too thick around the eyes, around the mouth, around the edges. It just was a piece that didn't turn out quite right, but I still thought that the sculpting was amazing, so when um, the other student was gonna toss it out, I said, wait, let me have it. I wanna play with it. I wanna try some makeup with it. So um, it was originally intended to be a Cobra. Um, I'll have her Instagram linked um, in the description below. And uh, I decided to use it for this. So usually the jaw would go on first and go underneath but because the edges were so thick, I decided to lay it on top because I thought the edges would blend better that way. I'm using uh, Melpax um, paint, Pax paint from Mel Products, which is what I used for the base of this prosthetic as well. And I'm now blending out those edges with at least some paint, and then blending out my bottom edge um, in retrospect, I should have probably glued down this neck piece better. It definitely came up right away when I started moving in it, which is no good. So I should have used a lot more um, in that sense. But I didn't because I was kind of shy because this is my first time putting a full prosthetic on myself. I have applied them to other people. I have not applied them to myself. So now I'm going in with uh, water activated paints from Graftobian. And I am going to paint the rest of my limbs. I'm fading from um, a lighter color down into a darker color. I'm also applying some of that darker color to my cleavage and chest and then once again blending up into those lighter colors. To make my scale work stand out a little bit more and to blend it down into my natural skin I'm doing some outline work going into the creases of what's already there and then creating some lines um, directly onto my skin with no three-dimensional product underneath. Um, I tried going in with one of my airbrush stencils and actually just kind of using a water activated paint on top and it worked really well on one side and then I got too much water on it and didn't work the greatest on the other side but I still managed to blend that out later when I hit into my airbrush. So I just wanted to get some scale pattern down before I started airbrushing everything. And um, you can see where it kind of melted. And I just used my sponge to blend it out. Next, I'm sponging some texture onto my shoulders as well darker areas and I'm going to sponge into the creases of the cheekbone and into the areas on the side of the neck. As I was looking at this in the mirror it just felt too flat. So just to make everything match I'm going in with these water activated paint colors on top kind of blending that out and then I'm using the matching water activated color to do my lips and my eyes because I don't want to put Pax paint in those areas. It's just horrid to get off your skin and I hate it and I never follow proper procedure to get it off because I am a horrible FX artist. 
Next, you wanna hydrate because you're an aquatic creature and aquatic creatures need water. Don't forget to hydrate as you're doing what you do. Here I'm gonna show you some of the stuff that I painted when I wasn't paying attention and didn't have my camera on. So I went ahead and painted my whole torso. I kind of did like a six pack thing and added some gill-like shapes on the side. And now I'm going in and adding a lime green scale and then shading out one edge with a black eyeshadow. And then on the opposite edge, I'm using a small detail brush to add a white highlight to make those scales stand out. You can see where I took the lime green and put it in my ears, on the top of my cheekbone, and on my chin in the prosthetic piece as well. So here you get another look at what I've kind of painted below. I've put some green dots down below the bralette as well, again, to kind of blend that out. And here I'm taking that stencil back and I'm going in with my airbrush and airbrushing in a scale up the side next to where I've painted my little six pack ab get up. I wanna make sure as I use an airbrush stencil that I'm not bringing my paint all the way to the edge because that's gonna create a really sharp edge. So I want to stay inside of the stencil and not go and blend all the way out to the edge, letting my paint kind of fade off as it gets to the further part, further edge. I don't know why I ever thought I could start a YouTube when I can't even speak clear English. <laughs> I'm getting up underneath the bra as well. Ta-da, we have dust scales. I'm gonna bring them up and blend in where I had done some of the watercolor earlier and just kind of blend everything out. I'm trying to keep the doggo noise to a minimum today, but um, even with me taking off the collars, they have decided that they're going to headbutt me as I'm trying to record my audio. So if you hear more strange noises in the background as usual, it's my pets. They never leave me alone. I love them, but they're crazy. So here we're going in and I'm doing some more airbrush right in the hollow of that cheek. I'm gonna add some scales there. I just keep adding lots of different textures around these problem areas where there are big ridges to kind of hide that. Kind of like when you mess up on a big wound and you just cover it in a bunch of blood, try and make, you know, things happen kind of around the same of what I'm doing right now, which is bad and you shouldn't do, you should just get good edges, but I chose to do this to myself by using a throwaway piece with bad edges to create this makeup because I just couldn't watch a beautiful foam sculpture go to waste. <laughs> I've come in with a second scale pattern I'm going to spray that on, blend that out. You can already see where my edges are lifting where I did not glue down quite well enough. I decided to airbrush a full cat eye into the one side. And now since I cannot get my edges to blend, I have resorted to DOS latex. I'm using latex and paper towel. The paper towel has a little bit of a scaly pattern on it. So it kind of blends in with those um, round circle texture. And then I'm also going to do this upper lip. And if one side of it looks kind of mangled, that's fine because that's where this big wound piece is in the prosthetic itself. So once again, I'm gonna cover that up with the water activated paint and blend it all out as well as I can with my odd edges.
Next, I'm going in and blending out the eyes. I've got a couple different shadows. Um, I've also opted to use this really bright highlighter that I'm applying with my finger so that it only attaches to the very top layer of the prosthetic and does not get into the, the bottom of the texture. But I'm using some blues and some greens from a shadow palette to kind of blend out areas and highlight areas. I've got this bright yellow highlighter that I'm putting once again with my fingertips kind of on top of the texture. Lots of different colors and lots of different patterns once again to distract from our crazy edges. Next I'm gonna go in and with a lighter color, a yellow, I believe from um, Graftobian's Pro Air collection, I'm pressing in and applying that secondary scale pattern on the very outside of this paint. I'm gonna go in and apply just a little bit of that to the chest area as well. As you can tell, this makeup is just lots and lots and lots of layers, lots of patterns, lots of color. Next for the wound area, I've decided that I'm going to stick a hook in it. So I've made a hook out of craft wire and I'm slowly putting it through the wound. In retrospect, I probably should have applied this while it was off my face, but I didn't. And then I ran into a bunch of problems, which I'm gonna share with you today. One of them that the hook is not going to stand upright in the manner that I want it to. So I'm going to have to use a small needle and actually sew it into the prosthetic which you should not do on your face because it sounds dangerous to be sewing things next to your eyes. So do as I say, not as I do. I'm gonna do something dangerous and tell you that you probably shouldn't do the same thing because um, you know, you'll shoot your eye up. The last thing I did for this was apply blood over this area and painted my hands and then we were all set to go. So here's the finished look. I climbed into a koi pond so we could get by the water. Get some good shots. I'm no Doug Jones, but I tried to do, you know, a little character acting, get into my character. If you like what you see here and you like my tutorials, please feel free to like, subscribe, follow me. See you next time.